hello, thanks for joining us. Coming up on today's show. She started out in the US Air Force, but seduced by her mother's music from an early age, she soon found herself performing in musicals on the Broadway stage. After traveling the world, she now lives here in France, where she's pursuing her own singing career. She's just released her second solo album, My World. Lisa Simone is today's guest. Lisa Simone, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you. Now, you live actually in the south of France. I do. In a, the house where your mother passed away, where she spent her last days. Um, has France adopted you? Have you ended up here? France definitely has welcomed me quite warmly. I'm really happy that I made the decision finally to just follow my heart and come here. So uh, it's definitely been a, a journey of the heart, which is what my songs are pretty much written from that place. And I'm following it and I'm really glad to be here and uh, living my dreams. And you're even speaking French. I am. <laughs> <laughs> Because you started your sort of professional life in the US Air Force. I did. Tell us a bit about that journey from that to this. It wasn't my plan. My college plans kind of went in the toilet when the adults in my life got involved and I, I wasn't patient. Youth and patience don't usually go hand in hand. So I decided to take the next best thing that presented itself and clearly that was the United States Air Force. Uh, and I wound up staying in for almost 11 years. But it was while I was in the Air Force that I was reunited with who I truly am, and uh, which is singing. And so I attribute uh, that journey to bringing me back to pretty much where I started. <laughs> and you began actually singing your mum songs, but now you're writing your own material. This is your second album with your own material on. Yes. Um, how did you go from that to this as well? Well, I actually really began singing in church when I was 16 years old. Um, it was always been a part of who I am, but the adults in my life said, you're not going to live that kind of life. So... I didn't argue. So it's interesting that it came back when it did. And to be doing what I'm doing now, carrying on the legacy from a place of joy and peace. So your mum didn't want you to sing? No, not really. She was afraid for me. She didn't want me to have a lot of the same experiences um, that she had had that left her feeling very angry and um, wishing she'd done something else. OK, but you, you're finding it a whole different experience. Well, see, my mother didn't choose to go into the industry. My mother didn't choose to become an artist. I made the choice, and I made the choice when I was already an adult. Therefore, my relationship to it is entirely different. OK, well, let's have a listen um, to a taster from the album, okay. My World. There we go. That was work song, and the beginning song was unconditionally. Yes. Um, written by your daughter? No, no, that was by inspired. Your daughter? The first line says, when I had my little girl, it changed my life overnight, literally. She taught me how to love without conditions. And uh, lots of songs on the album are inspired by you, really writing from the heart. Tell us about your inspirations. Life. <laughs> it's an inexhaustible wellspring of inspiration. As human beings, we all have so many things in common. Um, and I just want to write about those things and share my experiences so that um, we can all remember that we're all in this world together. And do you still feel like um, the daughter of Nina Simone or do you now feel, or maybe you always felt um, like your own person and separate from that label of being the daughter of? You got it. <laughs> I've always been independent when I look in the mirror it's me that I see. I'll always be the daughter of my mother, just like you'll always be the daughter of yours. Um, we are the product of our ancestors, but that, that doesn't mean that we don't have something to add to something that they've already brought to our family legacy. And that's what I'm doing now, and I'm, enjoy I'm enjoying it. <laughs> and what about your daughter? I mean, does she sing? 
Oh, she sings, she writes songs, she writes poems, and she's a little actress and a dancer, so she's an artist, it's in her blood. So it's sort of passing on from generation. Definitely, and there's a song on the album called I Pray that she not only wrote, but she performs it with me. So you get to hear, she made her recording debut on this album, and I just am so over the world about that. Oh, that's <laughs> exciting. Um, well, there's lots in the news or in the headlines about your mum at the moment, because there's two films and that are out, uh, that have been made about um, Nina Simone. One is a documentary directed by Liz Garbus called... And executive produced by me. And executive produced by you. <laughs> um, it's called What Happened, Miss Simone. You also appear in it. The other is a biopic starring Zoe Zaldana as Nina Simone. Now, in that, she dons dark makeup um, and has received quite a sharp backlash for it. You've spoken openly about not liking the movie. Yeah. Why? I'll just keep my response very simple. My movie, What Happened, Miss Simone, went to the Oscar Awards. It's my mother's truth, and she guides you through her life. It doesn't get any more authentic than that. And um, that's the best way that I can answer your question. <laughs> OK, well, you have praised the documentary, What <laughs> Happened, uh, Miss Simone. Let's take a look at it. I choose to reflect the times and the situations in which I find myself. How can you be an artist and not reflect the times? People think that when she went out on stage, she became Nina Simone. My mother was Nina Simone 24 7. And that's where it became a problem. Everything fell apart. Now, you've spoken, like in that, that clip there, we hear about the difficult relationship um, you've had with your mum, that she was the same on stage as she was off stage. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that? through the film, through working on the film, I mean, it took years to make, and through writing music, you've kind of dealt with some of those feelings. I mean, how do you remember and feel about your mum now? And how do you remember well, the, Nina Simone? The first thing I want to say is, my husband and I took 10 years to find the right team. We were the force behind making what happened, Miss Simone. I have to make that very, very clear. Um, and as far as my relationship with my mother, no one gets along with their parents all the time. And when we become parents, then oftentimes we realize the, the subtleties that are involved with being the person to, to guide and create someone to become a good citizen in this world. My mother loved from a tragic place because of her life was very tormented. And it doesn't mean she didn't love me. It just meant that's the only way she knew how to love me. It was up to me to find my path and to realize that I was loved. And God knows I love my mother deeply. And the fact that my promise to her on her deathbed that I would make sure she was not forgotten has been fulfilled in the form of what happened, Miss Simone. Now I'm able to turn fully in the direction of my own future and live my dreams. It's a wonderful story. If she was here now, what do you think she would think of your albums, of your music? What would she say, do you think? She'd say, well done, darling. <laughs> <laughs> well done. There's a song um, on the new album called Tragic Beauty. Tell us a little bit about that. It's dedicated to your mum. It's dedicated to her because that's exactly what happened the night before her death. It was Easter Sunday and I went home after leaving the show Aida and I was outside playing with my dogs and this wind came, it was very calm and all of a sudden it was a huge wind um, that made the dogs and I stop and look around. And I'd received word early in the day that my mother only had about 48 hours to live. And I just remember saying, Mom, and the next morning I got the phone call that she was dead. Um, it wasn't until I came to the south of France um, uh, two years ago that I was introduced to Le Mistral. And uh, it gets up to 100 kilometers per hour. And I realized that that was the same wind that came to Pennsylvania. So spiritually, um, I believe in many things since the death of my mother. I've learned many things since she passed away, that she's not really gone. <laughs> and she came to say goodbye. And she came to let me know that I was not alone. And since um, two years ago, when you did come to the house, it must have been quite a journey, because that's the house you live in now. Yes, and I associated that with the death of my mother. Um, and so I've done a lot of meditation, a lot of inner work to create a new relationship with that house that is not associated with pain and heartbreak. And as I say in the song, this place, which was inspired by re my relationship to the house, it's not just the house, it's my heart. And it's about going from heartbreak to resurrection and coming full circle and healing and being able to shine from a place of joy from a place that originally represented pain 
Um, it's, it's impressive stuff. Now, you're actually performing in Paris's Olympia Hall on the 14th of yes, April. It's an iconic place. I mean, if people don't know, everyone's performed there. Your mum performed there several times. The Beatles, Miles Davis, Ray Charles, Madonna. Um, do, did you go and see your mum there? I did. I was still in the military. It was in the 80s, but I was in transition. Uh, considering becoming a singer and I wasn't quite sure and when I saw my mom I was in the balcony and I I yelled after a certain tune and she smiled in spite of herself from the stage and I said in that moment to myself if I do decide to follow my heart and become a singer I would like to one day grace the stage of this amazing uh, place. So how does it feel? Um, it's pretty surreal right now but I think when I get out on the stage I'm just gonna get ask everybody to indulge me while I do a little dance a little happy jig <laughs> but uh, uh, it's very exciting. It's really exciting. And will you sing mainly songs from your two albums or maybe will you sing a song of your mother's as well? I always sing a song of my mother's no matter where I am. I'm the legacy walking, so you can always count on that. And do you have a favourite? I have you many favourites. Do you have just one? <laughs> no one has just one. <laughs> but there's going to be, we're going to have a lot of musicians joining us for this particular concert because normally it's, it's the four of us. But here we have horns, we have percussion, we have two background singers, so it's going to be a real full regalia that we have on the stage celebrating the birth of my world and it's going to be very exciting okay. i hope you're going to make it i will i will i'll try <laughs> lisa simone thank you so much for joining it's been a total pleasure to have you a new <laughs> album is called my world remember our website we're also on twitter and facebook there's more news coming up on france 24 after this